Hello and welcome to your one stop for vehicle repair, restoration, and everything automotive. This is Bird's Garage. jump back on our Chevy 350 engine project here. We just got it back from the machine shop a little while ago and we had really good news. They checked it for cracks and there was nothing in it. So we got a solid good foundation here to start our rebuild. Now we just can't start slamming parts in it and hope for the best. There's actually a lot of prep work that goes into this block before we can start actually start rebuilding it. So right now I'm going to walk you through and show you all the steps and how to rebuild this block. And the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to start, we're going to chase out all the threads. Before I start working on the block, I wanted to show you what a nice process the debaking is. So if you remember in previous episodes, you saw the block and it was full of oil and everything else. And more specifically, these coolant ports, they had blockage in them and really, really bad scale. And hopefully you can see this in the light, but there's just absolutely nothing in the block but a little bit of rust. So we have to, of course, blow out the block and wash it real good when we're done with all these processes before we start rebuilding. But uh, one thing I wanted to mention, though, as well, and unfortunately, this block has been sitting a little bit, and that's why it's got a little bit of rust on it. Normally, it comes out just bare cast iron. But whenever you get the block back, you want to make sure to put oil in all these cylinders so it doesn't start rusting. Hopefully, sometimes at the machine shop, then, if it's really, really a humid day, that they will actually do that for you. Because a lot of times, you take this stuff out right out of the oven. And what happens is it starts flash rusting right away. So they didn't do that. It's still winter time uh, where I am here. But uh, as soon as I got it back though, I, I put out oil in these cylinders. So then they won't start rusting. So the first thing I want to do to prep our block for rebuild is I want to chase every threaded hole in the block with a tap or a thread chaser to make sure that when I put all the components onto the block that they get the proper torque and that they're not going to have and the right clamping force in on the part that I'm going to be assembling. So make sure I don't have any issues later. Now I have a series of taps here. I'm just going to use taps because this is cast iron and it's never been rebuilt before. So it's acceptable. The threads are hard enough where you could just use a tap for this process. If you got aluminum, if you had a block rebuild a couple of times, you may want to look at getting a thread chaser. They actually don't take a little bit of the material out of threads like we might get in, in with the taps. So I'm going to start and show you with the hole for the cylinder head bolt. Now in a small block Chevy, these go actually through the coolant port. So you can run these a long period of time, but you're always actually going to be through the thread. So I'm just going to run it enough till I start sticking out a little bit and then I'm going to run it back through. Now these, depending on the hole, might go in pretty rough or, or pretty easy, and especially if you got a lot of debris in there. But the most critical thing is you want to start this by hand so you don't make sure you don't cross thread the hole. So this one I started and it goes goes in pretty nice. I might see depending on the hole I could do it by hand. But I could take my speed handle or do a ratchet and again I just want to run it down enough. And there's not too much resistance. That's actually a, a pretty clean hole. And I and it's all the way through and I'm just gonna then go ahead and, and I'm gonna back it out. This is actually a probably a better job for the the speed handle. like so. And see there's hardly anything then on the tap. So I'm still going to clean out and check the tap when I'm done with every hole and then I'm going to progress to the next one. Now there's a lot of threaded holes in this block so uh, it's definitely a, a job invented before fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take care of all the holes in this block and I'm, I won't film it for you. I'll save you the boringness and I'll catch up with you when I get that job done. So now that I have all the threads chased out with a tap and the block, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean up the oil drain holes. I want to make a little bit better transition to what they look like now so the oil goes back into the block faster. So in theory what happens is the oil can actually pull itself around here and what happens is then the oil doesn't transition to the block faster than what it should. So I'm going to go ahead, what I like to do with these is I like to take a drill, in this case I'm just going to use a strep, step drill here, and I'm just going to kind of cut that edge with that. So then after that I'm going to use this grinding stone, put it in the drill, clean it all up and make it look nice and smooth. So you can see it's already taken that 
taking that hard line out of here. So then I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up. And then I'm going to go ahead and do all the oil drain holes in the block. So you can see with these specific drain holes, they're nice and clean now. I got rid of that flat line and they have a nice smooth transition for the oil to go back into the oil pan faster. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my attention to these oil drain holes here in the back. They have really bad flashing around them and I can't do that with the drill bit. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take a series of rotary bits and stones like that and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of all that flashing in there so the oil will transition back to the oil pan faster as well. Now while I'm discussing about the flashing, I'm going to also go around the entire block. I also have to get these front oil drain holes too so a step drill won't, uh, bit won't fit into there so I'm going to go ahead and use the same process and clean those up as well. But I want to go ahead and get rid of any flashing on the block. Now in theory, the flashing can create stress cracks. If you look at this one here, the flashing is really bad. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get rid of all this and just go ahead and clean up the block so it looks a lot better than what it does in its current state. So unfortunately it's been sitting a little bit since we had it at the machine shop and they degreased it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now and uh, I will catch up with you when I get done. So I finally finished up with the block. I got all the oil holes chamfered. Cleaned up all the gasket surfaces with a red scotch brake. flashing off the block and I took a wire wheel and cleaned up most of the block to get try to get a lot of the rust off that was on there. And one also one final thing I did is I took a grinding wheel and I cleaned up where he had a hard line and all these surfaces here and I just made a nice little little round contour edge and uh, that'll that'll help eliminate any cracks in the future as well. We have all the drilling and tapping and everything else we had to do to this block out of the way we're going to turn our attention to the cylinder walls and we have to deglaze them and restore the cross hatch that they originally came with from the factory in order for the rings to seat and wear in properly and to do that we're going to use a flex home now i've had good luck with these flex homes in the past this one i picked up from cylinderheadsupply.com and they come in different sizes so whatever bore size that you have here you have to get something a little bit bigger than that and since we have a four inch bore, this is a little over four inches. So what we're gonna do then, I'm gonna clean up the cylinders first, and we're gonna use a lot of heavy and thick oil. So in this case, I'm gonna probably use straight 30. I think I have some here around the shop. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some back and forth motion with a drill. And again, we're gonna deglaze them and we're gonna restore the crosshead at the same time. <laughs> So I looped up the flex hone and the cylinder real good with straight 30 oil and now I'm just going to go into the cylinder, get a good start. I'm going to go back and forth through this for about 30 seconds and check it. So remember then, you're not going to take any material off with this. You're just, you're just deglazing the cylinder and enough to restore the cross hatch and that's all you're doing. You can see the oil looks dirty, that's really good. You're taking off very, very microscopic layers of the cylinder. So after that's out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the cylinder and check it. So you can see there, you see got a really nice cross hatch. Definitely what we're going for. That one's about done. I might do a little bit more and then I'm gonna go ahead and do all the other seven cylinders. Now what I forgot to mention earlier was that these come in different grits as well. What I'm using is a 240 grit and that's perfectly acceptable for the cast iron stock rings that we're using. 
So obviously if you get your engine board in a machine shop, they're gonna do all this work for you. You're not gonna have to hone or anything. You can just go ahead and rebuild the pistons, put the new rings on and start putting them into the cylinders. So I just finished cleaning up all these cylinders with the flex hone. You can see what a really nice crosshatch it has. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we're all finished with this process. The cylinders look really, really good. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to move forward and we're going to clean the block up. So the final step we're going to do, which is also a critical important step, is we're going to go ahead and thoroughly wash this block. So I'm going to roll it outside. I'm going to use soap and water, sponges brushes, whatever I need to do, I'm going to thoroughly clean this block inside and out. Now even if you're not going to do all the work that I did on this block, you still want to clean it after you get it back from the machine shop. Make sure it's nice and spotless, there's no debris in or anything like that. You don't know how thorough the machine shop, if at all, they cleaned it. So it's really important that you do that yourself. You don't want any particles or anything around in your coolant and oil when you first get your, you know, when you get your engine back and get it rebuilt. So I'm going to go ahead and roll it outside, do that wash the block, come back in, and we're going to put some paint on it. Now, if you think this is not a critical step, look at this. This is all the debris I blew out of the block. So if I didn't convince you before, I hope that video did. You gotta blow out the block, you gotta clean it, or you're gonna put all that crap that you just saw floating around into your nice rebuild engine. So I got the block out nice and clean. It's been drying for a while, so we're all ready to go ahead and prep it for paint. But before I paint the block, I wanna go ahead and put the freeze plugs in. Now we're gonna use steel freeze plugs. They're a little bit cheaper. So this way we're gonna paint over the freeze plugs and then they'll act as a rust barrier. If you're gonna have brass freeze plugs, which obviously don't rust, you can put those in after you paint it. It's personal preference, and I like the way the block looks with the paint over the, uh, over the freeze plugs. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. One important thing as well, make sure when you get the block back in and it's dry, put oil back in the cylinder so they don't start rusting again because if you leave it exposed a little bit, they'll start right away and you're gonna to have to hone the cylinders all over again. So right now then I'm gonna gather the tools we need and we're gonna start plugging all these freeze plugs into this engine. So obviously this is a 350 Chevy engine kit, so the plugs that size that you need are, are all in the kit. So what I like to do, I don't have a set of specific drivers, so all I'm going to do then is find a socket like this that fits pretty good in there, close to the edge. So I have this really old half inch extension, and the socket doesn't even stay on there anymore. So I'm going to actually use that as my driver by putting it together because I'm not going to damage anything. Now when inserting the freeze plug into the block, I like to use some sort of sealer. You can use RTV, uh, you can use a gasket forming material, but my choice is using Permatex number two. And that's what I'm going to do then when I put this freeze plug into the hole and drive it in. Now when I drive it, you can see there's a little bit of a, it's at a little bit of an angle and then it stops right here. So I'm actually going to get this edge right about with this edge right here or just drive it a little bit lower and that's about as far as I want to go. Now obviously you keep going and going you can pop it right through. The freeze plug is not going to be any good anymore and you're going to have to get another one. So then to put the plug in I'm going to use this Permatex number two like I said and I'm just going to put a coating around the edge And I'll get the freeze plug, be smooth it if you have to. And put the freeze plug in like that, get it kind of uniform. Then go ahead and get your driver ready. And then drive it in with a hammer. Now we're a little bit, it's actually about as, let me go a little bit more, it's about as far as I want to get it in. And 
and I'll clean that up a little bit because the paint has sometimes a little problem sticking to it. And that is the proper way to install a freeze plug. Okay, so I have all the freeze plugs in. I actually put all these pipe plugs in as well. That's really important, otherwise the coolant's gonna spill all over as you should try to put it into the block. So now I'm gonna go ahead and prep it for to start painting. Now obviously you don't wanna get paint inside the cylinders, inside the engine, and also on these gasket surface areas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape everything off and I'm gonna use paper in the inside and I'm gonna use it in the valley pan on the opposite side and I'm gonna seal everything up and I'm gonna put some paint on it. Now, I'm going to use this different series of masking tapes, and I'm going to go around. Now, this is a really nice edge, so what I'm going to do is just lay the tape down right on that edge and follow that contour. And this will work out really good for this particular area. There, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get a lot of this done on the bottom, and then flip it over and do the top. Now, one thing I also did, too, is I wiped down all these areas and gasket surfaces with some, uh, I use lacquer thinner, but you can use brake clean works good. And then I cleaned up a lot of the permatex that went everywhere as well. So once I get all this done and taped off, we'll be able to start putting some paint on this and it's going to look like a totally different brand new block. So when you start to get some round areas like this, I'm still going to use the tape and I'm just going to take the tape and I'm going to follow the contour and just lay it down flat like this and seal it up. Put one little piece here because the paint will go there and that's it, that's all I need to do. So then for this area that I don't want any paint, I'm just going to take some newspaper and I'm going to start with the flat edge against the flat straight area of the pan boss and I'm just going to roll it out like this. And then for the other side to make it fit, I'm just going to bend the paper over enough so I can get some tape on. To curve it a little bit where the pan moves here in the back. Then I'll take some two-inch tape and just keep some paint out of this area where the main bearing cap goes and the back of the crankshaft. And it's that so. Now we're going to progress to the front. So for the timing chain area, I'm going to follow pretty much the same technique and just curve it. Even if you get a little bit of paint on the gasket surface, you just take a razor blade and you take the tape off and it'll be, it'll come right off. Or a little paint thinner. So I'm just going to go right up to, right up to this edge where this needs paint and this does not. Now instead of tearing the tape like this, and you can do this around these complex uh, curve areas here too, you can just take an, uh, an X-Acto knife, razor knife, and just curve it like this, take it out, so the paint will go down where it needs to and seal it really nice. I'm going to go ahead and finish off the rest of it. This one I'm going to stop and then just go on the top. This is my So with this here, I'm just going to stop. I actually want to get paint. I want to get paint on this area, so I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut this off. Like so. This area, I need the, the, the razor again. And you can also, if you don't get it all, you can just kind of push it down like this and pack it flat. And you can see it still makes a nice, makes a nice hard edge here for the paint to stop.
Now for this one, this one I'm def it's got a really nice circle to it, and I'm definitely going to use definitely going to use the razor knife like that. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and put paper in the center. Still got to put a little more tape there, but same principle where we will get the we will get the paper to fit the best we can in the circle and just put tape on the edges. So a two inch tape works better for this type of job than the small tape. Same principle, fold it over to where you need it. Now if this was auto body, I definitely would not be using newspaper because the ink can the ink can leak off and onto your painted surfaces, but for just for this doing this engine, it's fine. Okay, so I'm not finished taping and papering, so I want to start putting the paint down. Before that, I want to put a primer down first. Now, the primer is going to serve a couple of purposes. First, it's going to act as a rust barrier between the cast iron and the regular paint. And secondly, it's going to promote adhesion for the paint to stick really good. So I'm going to use a, a duplicolor specific primer that's heat resistant up to 500 degrees, so that'll be perfect for this engine block. So I'm going to put this down, let it set a little bit, and then I'm going to go ahead with the paint. This is definitely a respirator job here, so make sure you use it, when you, especially when you're indoors like I am. got done with the primer it's been sitting a little bit everything looks really good so we're gonna go on ahead and move on to the engine paint now in my opinion a small block Chevy should not be anything other than Chevy orange so we're gonna go ahead and spray this duple color engine enamel ceramic onto this block let it set up a little bit we'll give it a second coat and then we'll be all done and we can start rebuilding our engine <laughs> looks fantastic but it's only our first step to a long journey of rebuilding a good successful engine so it's all the time we're going to have for today's show next show we're going to start putting a lot of hard parts and actually rebuilding this engine so as always thanks for watching good luck with your projects and remember it's not a rewarding day unless you get dirty <laughs>